Here we have a... We have an oven bird. Uh -huh. The bird would have flown into the net, and the net's very soft. We've gently fallen into the pocket here. One of the main functions of the Bird Observatory is to monitor populations of birds, especially the species that breed in northern Canada in the boreal forests where we can't study them on the breeding grounds. So through banding and through standardized counts, we keep track of the numbers of birds of different species passing through this area. And we've been doing this study since 1961. We check the nets about every 15 to 20 minutes. And the birds usually don't stay in the bags for more than about another 15, 20 minutes. So basically they're not interrupted for more than about half an hour out of their day through this little banding process. Mm -hmm. 8.3. And a 63 wing. This is a Swainson's thrush. And it's a long distance migrant. So it migrates all the way down to South America. And we just happen to catch it on its migration north to the breeding grounds. And I'm just going to use a band to put on it. And each one of these bands have um, a particular number. And that number identifies the particular bird. And we record the number, which will be number 26 of the 1Bs. And a 2-fat. Um, when I'm blowing, to part the feathers, I'm just looking for the amount of fat in the furculum. And that tells me um, pretty much what the condition of the bird. Um, as it's migrating, it requires fat. Long Point is the longest running bird observatory in Canada. There's well over 200 species recorded in the Long Point area. We certainly do get some rare species, and that's one of the exciting things for the bird watchers here. 14.3 grams. He's gone. We've had yellow warblers for up to 10 years coming back year after year, migrating down to Central and South America, coming back. And that's very exciting to think how far this bird has gone in between trips. There's a lot of different information that we can get from the banding and from the counts. The most straightforward is just the numbers of each species that we detect every day. And the average numbers across the season give us some indication of how well a particular species is doing. And so we have years of data. From this, we've been able to learn that some species go up and down a lot in their populations. The Tennessee warbler, the Cape May warbler, and a few other warblers are strongly affected by insect outbreaks, such as spruce budworm. So we've been able to document the increases in budworm years and then the decreases again when the food supply goes down. Bacchus Woods is the largest single block of Carolinian forest that exists anywhere in southern Ontario and therefore anywhere in Canada, and is moderated in climate by the effects of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario and Lake St. Clair. So the climate and the soil conditions are such that we can have species surviving and thriving here that can't survive anywhere else in the country. Part of why Bacchus Woods is unique from a habitat standpoint is the fact that we have a series of low wet areas known as sloughs and high dry areas which are prehistoric uh, sand dunes from Lake Erie that crisscross through the entire property. Probably the most well-known of the Carolinian species, certainly among the trees such as we have here at Bacchus Woods, are the tulip tree, the sassafras, the black gum, and the sycamore, to name only four. This is a sassafras. You can recognize the sassafras by its leaves. No two leaves are often the same. This one on the left is shaped like a mitt, whereas the leaf on the right, an equally aged leaf, has three points to it. Now we've got a baby tulip tree up here. A you small say? tulip tree, which gets its name from its blossom, from the flower. But its leaf is also quite special, very similar to what we know as our maple leaf. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.